Hello and welcome to Western Bloodstock. I'm Jeremy Barwick, this is my wife Candace, and we welcome you to join December 9th through the 14th, all of the festivities we have during the NCHA fraternity. Now Jeremy, all these sales uh, going on, you've got different ages of horses, you've got all the way from yearlings to, to uh, even older showing cutting horses. Somebody that'd like to come and just buy a good riding horse or a team penning horse or, or just a weekend cutter. Uh, you've got you've got all that there available, don't you? Yes, sir. We've got we've got sales ranging from yearlings all the way to show horses, brood mares, breeding stallions. But basically, a horse for for anything you'd like to do with them. Yep, that's great. So uh, check it out, Western Bloodstock at the NCHA Fraternity in Fort Worth, Texas, December 9th through the 14th is when the festivities and the sale goes on the last week of the fraternity. Welcome. We're here at Shadow Oak Ranch in Stevensville, Texas, and I'm here with the Hall of Famer Pete Branch and his great horse, Kit Kat Sugar. Pete, what a wonderful horse. This horse was uh, last year, I believe, the horse of the year. Is that correct? Yes, he was. Yes, and, he was. And uh, he's only a five-year-old? Five now, correct. You decided to, to uh, retire him at a four-year-old at the top of his game. I believe the last score that you scored was probably a 228 in the Brazos Bash. We did a 231 at, at Rancho after that, and the very last run he made was a 225 at, at uh, Jackson, Mississippi. So he was he was retired sound. Uh, all the top hands that I talked to said that this is one of the most phenomenal horses they've ever seen. Uh, he, he stops as hard as any horse. He turns as hard as any horse. Tell us a little bit about how he was to train, Pete. This is the first highbrow cat stud that I've trained. I've trained a, a lot of highbrow cat mares, and everybody told me that uh, how laid back and lazy they were going to be, and this one was anything but laid back and lazy. Uh, his mother had a lot of move in her. She was a ricochet uh, out of uh, Little Badger Dulce, the, the mare that I also won horse of the year on, the very first horse of the year. Chris, you know one of the most unique things about Kit Kat Sugar is the fact that he is double herd negative, which is extremely hard to find nowadays uh, in a highbrow cat stallion. It is, you know, that's uh, that's worth a lot right there, Pete, because uh, that's strong. And uh, just a phenomenal stud. Uh, you were talking about how he stops this horse, it stops hard every time, and he likes it, doesn't he? Unbelievable stopping horse, and, and uh, I guess probably one of the most phenomenal things about him is, is uh, is that he stayed sound that whole time. Uh, we've, we've never had any soundness problems whatsoever with him. Pete, thanks for having your stud here today. Chris, thanks for having us. If you're interested in breeding to one of the hottest sires in the industry, Kit Kat Sugar, check him out. Owned by Barbara and Lonnie Alsop and standing at the Brazos Valley Equine Stallion Station. Hello, my name's Debbie Patterson. I work for Brazos Valley Stallion Station. I'm the breeding manager. Our newest stud to the, the Brazos Valley Stallion Station is Dual Smart Ray. He is an 11 year old stud that belongs to Don Horton by Dual Ray out of the Smart Look. Uh, with very limited foal crop, he has 51 colts that are showing and they've already won 900,000 in excess. Uh, and we're really excited to get that horse here at Brazos Valley Stallion Station. The next two studs actually are Widow's Freckles and Hickory's Indian Pep, who is by Doc's Hickory. Both of those studs belong to David and Stacy McDavid, and uh, they were new to the Stallion Station this year as well. Uh, our junior sire, uh, first time he uh, stood at stud was this year in 2013 is Kit Kat Sugar. He is by the world famous Highbrow Cat and out of Sugar and Dulce who was out of Little Badger Dulce. He won uh, right at 240,000 uh, with one year of showing uh, only as a four year old and he was the NCHA 2012 Horse of the Year. Uh, his first babies will be coming in 2014 and we're really excited. He bred some of the greatest mares in the business. Uh, we're really excited to have these studs. Uh, our goal is to provide the best care and service that we possibly can. Uh, we don't want to say no to anything. Uh, if, if it's at all possible, we'll do everything we can to get our job done. 
Well, Pete, what a beautiful stallion. Tell me a little bit about him. What is his name? Uh, this horse is Little Dulcie's Ray. Uh -huh. uh, he, uh, his first coat crop is our three-year-olds this year. There's just three of them. That's the ones that you worked earlier? Correct, yep. it is. It, it's the, the, that's two of the three. Uh, this horse had to retire his show career as a four-year-old due to an injury. Uh, really a nice horse. He's out of the, the he's by Dual Ray and out of our great mare, Little Badger Dulcie. Yeah, boy, he's got some bone on him, huh? Yes, sir. And uh, we were talking earlier. What a what a great what a great combination from uh, uh, breeding over some highbrow cat mares. Correct. He he is a, a great outcross for highbrow cat mares. Plus, our idea was that that he does have a lot of bone, and we wanted to try to put some bone back on those cat mares. Well, he's a he's a gorgeous stallion. Those two horses you worked this morning. Uh, during your tip during the show or by this by this day and and uh, I like I like the bone that he throws you know this horse you, you could breed him and go roping on some of those horses you could go barrel rest you could go anywhere you this bet horse, you bet you and they're excellent minded horses you were talking earlier about how sensitive he is he doesn't like to be you know corrected very much he, he's pretty sensitive he's he's very sensitive he's a very good minded horse means, and, uh, you know you it doesn't bet. take it doesn't take much to train no, these kind of horses no he he's a he's a good minded horse and Lots of personality, really, really a nice horse. And these horses are, are, are owned by the by the great people, Barbara and uh, Lonnie also, which you've worked for for 20 something years. They uh, got some of the best stock in the industry. This brand here, right here, is, is one of the most distinctive brands in the quarter horse industry. If you're interested in breeding this great stallion, Little Dulcie Ray, check him out. He uh, stands over at, uh, at the Brazos Valley uh, Stallion Station in Stevensville, Texas. And he's at a bargain at $1,000. Uh, great bone, great structure, great mind. Check him out. He's nicknamed Hotwire. We're up here at the breeding facility, which is just above the staying barn. I'm here with Dr. David Ricks. Uh, thanks for having us up here on sure, no problem. at your place, no uh, problem. Doc. Uh, this is quite a facility. I look up in the ceiling, I see a lot of cameras and, and uh, you know, that goes, you got fans, you got insulation. You know, when somebody brings a mare here and they've got foals and everything, they want to have the best care, or they got a mare that's trying to foal, uh, this place here, it's monitored pretty tight. Definitely, definitely. We're trying to make it as comfortable as possible for the, for the horses, uh, as well as ourselves. <laughs> but uh, we do have the camera system, so we can uh, always have our eyes on them, even if we're in here working, we know what's going on, you know, in the stalls in case anybody's having Shoot. problems. Yeah, you, you, yourself and Dr. Charlie Buchanan uh, had this place up on the operation on the breeding and and, and all that. So it's uh, it's quite a quite a facility. Um, we uh, we really recommend anybody that, that wants to breed to these stands to be able to send your mare here, and and uh, I'm sure that your mare will get taken care of. Looks like a a, a really upscale five star facility. Uh, you got everything here you need, and definitely. And, uh, couldn't ask for anything more. Definitely, definitely, yep. We're happy with it. Um, you know, this area right here is where we do most of our work uh, with the stocks. We bring the mares and foals up to do the palpations and, and deal with any of the, the sick foals and things like that. So, um, you know, and we've got 70 stalls here, so we've got plenty of room to, to bring the mares to us and, and we can take care of them. Well, the Brasses Valley Veterinarian uh, is, is actually my vet. Charlie Buchanan's my personal vet, so it's ironic that we're here and, and he's the head vet as long as yourself here at the facility. He does a great job with my horses and, and I'm sure he takes care of the mares and the foals as well as yourself uh, as well. So uh, great facility. If you're interested in, in sending your, your mare here or breeding some of these great stands, again, check them out at Brazos Valley Stallion Station in Stevensville, Texas. Hello and welcome. We're here at Sean Flynn Training Stables here in Weatherford, Texas. And uh, we're here to talk about one of the greatest stallions going in the, on the road today, the six-year-old stallion by the name of Catman Blue. Sean, you've been uh, one of the hottest trainers this year. Uh, you've won the Super Stakes. You've won a lot of events. Uh, this has to be one of your favorite horses, Catman Blue. He is. He's um, by far one of my favorites. He's uh... His brain for a cow is just incredible. Uh, I've never ridden a horse that can think about a cow as good as this horse. I'm joined with the 2012 XTO Energy NCHA Super Stakes Open Classic Champion, Sean Flynn, who marked a 225 on Catman Blue for Lazium Cattle of Forney, Texas. 
Sean, how does it feel to have your first victory here at Will Rogers? It feels really good. You know, it was something that us guys from Australia, we, uh, we dreamed about winning something in this building and uh, finally got one. Sean, what I notice about him, and a lot of people do, is when that horse stops, there's that horse, I mean, he stops, doesn't he? He's not going anywhere. He sure does. You know, I've, I've never ridden a horse that can go so fast and get so still in a stop. Yeah, and that's you, you think that's due to his cow as well as his it, athletic it is. ability? It is. He's got an incredible brain yeah. for a cow. Sean, you've had Catman Blue from the beginning. Uh, what kind of a horse was he to start on cattle? What kind of a horse was he to train? Uh, he was real simple to train. You know, um, he's, he's like, like we said earlier, he's a great athlete and, um, you know, he, he's so smart. We had a um, dark smoky grey cow, slick cow that I wanted to cut first. It's walking right up here in the middle. And uh, I just felt like she was a good cow to start with. And I talked with John Mitchell right before and uh, he agreed that she was going to be, you know, the cow up that we thought to, to start on. And uh, I really felt like she, she started this run really good. She, uh, she got a hold of the horse. She was, uh, she was a really good cow. Is he like this all the time? It's almost looked like he's, he's just so relaxed. And... He's, he's pretty laid back, you know. He, he can be a little playful, but uh, yeah. he's a pretty sensible horse. He's, his mother was, is probably one of the greatest mares ever, mm -hmm. you know, Quentin sure Blue. Was. And, uh, you know, out of, and he's by uh, Highbrow Cat. Uh, you know, he's, I bet you guys are excited. I think you bred him this year. Is this right. the first year that you bred him? Right. You, did you get some good mares to him? Yeah, yeah, we got some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. yeah, he had a pretty decent little book for his first year. Good, good. You know, these people, they, um, they bought him out of the Rock Creek sale, um, and uh, Mr. Mitchell's wife picked him out because he had freckles on his face, in, on his blaze, so that's... Uh, you know, great people. This this was the first horse I had for them. Um, actually, Mike Coleman um, sent me this horse. Uh, he worked for these people for a while, and uh, he uh, he felt like this horse would really fit me, and uh, he sent him to me, you know, halfway through his three-year-old year, and uh, we went from there. Sean, we've known each other for many, many years. I've seen you grow and be successful. Uh, we're going to get you to do a training tip here for us today. Uh, later in the show, and and uh, you selected to do it on Catman Blue. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't think of a better horse to do it on. That's yeah. for sure. Pretty cool. I believe you're going to head to uh, Jackson, Mississippi this weekend to go ahead and show him. So uh, we look forward to watching him work. Sounds good. He'll, that'll be his last Ace Event show, and um, possibly we'll show him some more next year and some Mercuria Opens and stuff. So. Well, he'll be certainly a contender. If you're interested in breeding this great stay and check him out, Catman Blue, owned by Lazy M Cattle Company standing at Weatherford Equine in Weatherford, Texas. Hello, welcome back. We're here at the legendary Four Sixes Ranch here in Guthrie, Texas. And I'm here with the manager of the horse division, Dr. Glenn Blodgett. Glenn, we've, uh, we've come out here to the Sixes today to look at some of these great stayings that you've had. You've had some, uh, you, you guys have, have been very, very well recognized with some of the bloodlines over the years. Of, of having great, great stallions here and, and, and what a wonderful breeding facility. Uh, you, you've had a, you know, one of your, your freshman sires here, uh, four six, uh, sixes pick, has, has been an all round champion. He's bred a lot of really nice horses and, and I had the fortune of riding one as well. One rode the horse on him my third time there. Uh, you stand some great stallions out here. I bet he's a cat. Uh, Rockin' W, Boone Sand, WR, this cat smart. Uh, a lot of wonderful stallions. Talk a little bit about your program here. Tell us a little bit about where you're looking to in the future. You told me this year you've had a great year. Tell us a little bit about what's going on here at the Four Sixes. Well, Chris, our, our goal here has always been to raise the world's best ranch horse. And uh, in doing so, uh, we, we've always tried to incorporate some of the real popular bloodlines in the industry today in the, in the Western performance horse world. Well, the nice things about it is, you know, I just visited with Chance O'Neill here, your head trainer here at the ranch. You guys use them on the ranch. You know if they travel well, you know if they've got cow sense, uh, if they're good working horses, that's where it starts. They've come out of the arena, all of them, and, and with, with uh, very good credentials. Uh, WR has already proven himself. He's uh, He's well over earnings and uh, well over four million dollars of, uh, of earnings uh, since he's come to stud. Of course, Six's pick 
you know, was raised right here on the ranch. You know, he was sired by Tank Ray Jen, who I, I think was the, probably the greatest ranch horse, all around ranch horse sire. And like Tank Ray Jen, you've taken Tank Ray Jen and, you, and, and you've tried to make him a little bit better through for, for Six's pick, breeding to the best mares, and, and it continues to grow. And, and, uh, and where we're looking, you know, in the future, these horses seem to be getting better and better and better. And, and uh, you know, that there's no greater test than put them out here on five or 600,000 acres and, and riding and working cattle and, and finding out what kind of horses these are. Chris, we think that's what it's all about. I mean, the, the true all around horse is what we're trying to produce here. And, the, and, and like you said, a horse that's a pleasure to ride as well as one that's got ability, got stamina and got, got the strength to, to perform all these jobs and cover all this country here. Cause we, you know, we don't use a four wheeler. We still, we use a, we use a horse. Right. And, uh, and we don't use a, a cake sack either. You know, we're, we, we like to ride a horse here on this place. And that's, that's historically, that's, it was that way. It's been that way since 1870 here. What I like about your program is that you're not uh, really scared about trying to bring in some other thoroughbred influence into these quarter horses to, to strengthen up that bottom side. I mean, because as we all know, some of these horses get pretty close together when we start breeding them. That's right, Chris. Uh, you know, years ago, this ranch used uh, the remount stallions uh, to produce uh, uh, horses for the for the cavalry, and, uh, and and those all those remount stallions were thoroughbreds. And some of those remount stallions uh, have had a dramatic influence uh, on, on all of our uh, bloodlines that we we have in use today in our mare band. And uh, and today, in, in this day and time, we actually use the racing quarter horse who, as you know, has got, got a lot of thoroughbred influence in it. If you're interested in breeding some of these great stallions standing here at the Four Sixes Ranch, check out the website or the number below. They'll be happy to accommodate all your needs with your mare care and stallion services. Hi, I'm Sean Flynn from Weatherford, Texas. I train cutting horses for a living. Um, we're here today um, to do a tip for Chris's show and uh, I'd like to thank him for letting me be involved. I'd like for you guys to stick around and watch. Hopefully you'll get something out of watching this. As soon as that cow come in, this horse is looking for that cow. He's, uh, unfortunately, they're not all like this horse and uh, don't crave it, but it's, uh, it's a real game to this horse. Um, you know, he, he'll just get to where he wants to play with that cow and uh, keep it trapped and stop. And, uh, that's pretty much what we train a horse to do. And obviously, some horses are better than others in different areas. This horse, to me, is a pretty complete package. As far as the training side of things go, this horse here will run and stop nice and straight every time. And to me, that's the most important thing about training a cutting horse, a team pen horse, or anything. That's where, that's where a horse that works a cow has to balance from. Is from their hindquarters. And uh, you see right there how he stops and hesitates and reads that cow through the turn. The best advice I can give anyone as far as training is the stop. It's by far the most important part of training a horse and how a cutting horse works.
what this horse just did then and run and stop that cow and trapped it is the most important part of a cutting horse's show career. Because if a horse doesn't stop good and straight, and get still and get comfortable in that stop, the rest of it never stays pure in the fact that a horse will get to anticipating that cow and that turn. Thanks for watching. Hope these tips were helpful in some way, no matter what discipline you do. And uh, thanks again to Chris Cox for uh, inviting me on his show. Hey, thanks for watching the show. Hope you enjoyed some watching some of these great stallions and some of the training tips that we had available for you. Uh, remember, the Western Bloodstock sales start in Fort Worth, Texas on December the 9th, all the way through December the 14th. We look forward to seeing each and every one of you in Fort Worth, Texas at the NCHF Fraternity. Our sales go from December 9th through December the 14th.